preventing cross-contamination is an issue that we are living every day in this current pandemic, but this is an important problem now, and was important in the past, and will be in the future because hospital infections are a major problem. So our work is going to focus on preventing cross-contamination in hospitals. Cross-contamination is the process by which a substance that is harmful or dirty spreads from one area to another. Normally because of unsanitary handling procedures. First, it's important to define the types of contamination that exist. There is biological contamination, like viruses, fungi, bacteria, allergens, chemical and physical contamination environmental contamination, air and water, and food and beverages contamination. In a hospital, there is a lot of sources of contamination, but the most common places are surfaces, beds, chairs, tables, bathrooms, monitors, buttons of elevators. In many studies performed, this statistical data was obtained. Candle developed a study with stupefying results. They compared microbiological contamination of toilet surfaces with buttons on hospital elevators, and the buttons showed higher colonization, 61%, than the toilets, 43%. A recent study from Starmeyer showed that only 42% of healthcare workers washed their hands before contact with a patient, and 50% washed their hands after contact with the patient. Also, this study found out that 94.3% of healthcare workers' hand hygiene procedure lasted less than 15 seconds, when the recommendations is that it should last around 30 seconds. Another study evaluating disinfection compliance by healthcare workers showed that only 26% of the inquired radiologists affirmed to disinfect their workstation daily. 24% admitted never to have disinfected their workstation, and 100% said to have never received any recommendation on how to perform the disinfection. Actually, White found out in an hospital that microbiologically the sinks and floors were cleaner than hand-touched sites as chairs, beds and cardiac monitors buttons. Lestari performed a similar study but evaluating ECG lead wires, and among the 451 lead wires analyzed only two were non-contaminated with some type of microorganism. The ineffect of cleaning associated with the ability of microorganisms to survive on surfaces under hostile conditions, for long periods of time, is a serious cause of pathogens spreading to people and to other surfaces. You know that. Are you surprised with this data? We all should think about this, so what can be done to change this? It is important to work in three sources, people, medical devices and surfaces. Before starting to talk about how we can prevent cross-contamination using these three strategies, it is important to be aware of three different concepts, which is cleaning, disinfection and sterilization. People have an important role in preventing cross-contamination, healthcare professionals and cleaners staff, they all have a role on preventing the dissemination of infections, either by using a correct protective equipment, PPES, like masks, gloves, or in terms of the cleaning staff, they has a major role in controlling an infection, because they are responsible for the effectiveness of cleaning disinfection practices. Their high turnover, incorrect disinfectant contact times, and over-dilution of disinfectant solutions are negative factors for successful cleaning. So it's very important follow the standard operating procedures that should include hand hygiene, decontamination of medical devices and patient care equipment, environmental cleaning, Healthcare waste management, injection safety, healthcare worker protection, for example, post-exposure prophylaxis, vaccinations. 
aseptic techniques, triage of infectious patients, basic principles of standard and transmission-based precautions and routine monitoring of the implementation of infection prevention and control guidelines, SOPS. It's important to classify the medical devices, because some of them are more critical than others, and it's easy to understand this, the more critical devices that have a higher risk of infection are devices that are in direct contact with the bloodstream or tissues, so they have to be sterile, like for example laparoscopes, arthroscopes or intravascular endoscopes. Semi-critical devices are thus in contact with mucosa or non-intact skin and they have a medium risk of infection, so they need to be disinfected. Examples of this are duodenoscopes, endotracheal tubes, bronchoscopes, laryngoscope blades and other respiratory equipment. Finally, non-critical devices are whose surfaces contact only intact skin and do not penetrate it. They have a low risk of infection but they need to be cleaned or disinfected. Examples are lewd pressure cuffs, stethoscopes, and skin electrodes. This current pandemic is important that the medical devices are well cleaned or disinfect and don't become a source of contamination and spread of the disease, so lots of strategies are given. The FDA make a guideline with devices that could be used in this situation, like sterilizers, disinfectant devices that could be chemical, physical disinfectant devices. The energy is transferred when the saturated steam touches the metal instrument, which causes a condensation and its immediate transfer of heat. And it's that heat that kills the microorganisms on the instruments. CDC recommends the use of disinfectants such as chlorine, alcohol, aldehydes, quaternary ammonium compounds, iodophores, paracetic acid, hydrogen peroxide and phenolics ultraviolet UV disinfecting devices. This type of devices are in study but are proven that UV devices can be used for disinfect isolation rooms after the discharge of a patient and between an entry of a new patient and if used. Associated with SOP. Significantly reduced microorganisms. Medical industry professionals are looking to new technology to decrease the amount of infections patients acquire when they're in the hospital. Purple Sun is a startup, and the name of a potentially game-changing device that uses ultraviolet light to zap all the germs from operating rooms, stretchers, and more. And this method of disinfecting performs the work that would normally be done by a cleaning crew in half the time. And finally, use of air purifiers is a well-recognized strategy for preventing cross-contamination. Rooms occupied with infected patients often have their surfaces contaminated with pathogens leading to the contamination of hands and gloves of medical staff. And consequent transfer of these microorganisms to patients or onto other surfaces. This is a well-recognized mechanism of cross-contamination. So surfaces represent an important way of transmission of diseases and is important to prevent this contamination. Various strategies become available and are in study like surfaces with built-in antimicrobial agents, use of metals like silver and copper that have antimicrobial properties, application of aerosols or UV light, cold plasma technology, surface modification, functionalization, Loading antimicrobial compounds into materials, photoactivated surfaces, titanium four oxide. Last but not less important, you can see in the description of the video, a link to a presentation where you can see recommendations for what to do for different settings. Health and non-health care facilities about cleaning options during this COVID-19 pandemic, in terms of surfaces, toilets, textiles, cleaning equipment, protective equipment and waste management. This is suggestions given by European Centre for Disease Control and Prevention. Thank you for watching, if you want to see our work, keep attention. We will put soon a link for our scientific paper in the description of the video.